Okay, time to put new bearings in the 4G63. Fun. That's my dad, he's helping. Hey! Alan? Hey! You wanna get in here and press the clutch on this pig? Why didn't you want that old guy to get in here and press the clutch? Cause I don't wanna watch you climb over the roll cage. Okay. Right. Okay. So I got a dial indicator on here. Oh yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, that's bad. That's real bad. So, when I pry the crank back, we're talking like 40 thou. Okay, let me go back to here. Okay, press it again now. <laughs> 42 thou. All right, she's fucked. Time to bring the bearings out. Alan's helping. Alan bought my Cadillac. And he's getting papers for it today. So we're draining the rad, get the rad out of the way. It makes it easier to get the turbo out of the way. I've got the north-south bar, and the subframe stiffening bar out of there. And then uh, we get the turbo out of the way, and then the transfer case, and then the pan can come down. Easy. All right, so rad's out. Turbo's loose, holding on by one bolt. Um, it is, for whatever reason, just easier to pull the turbo. Getting my downpipe off is a real pain. It's just too tight in there, so it's easier to pull the turbo and drop it that way and then pull the uh, transfer case and then drop the pan. And once I got the pan dropped, then I'll be able to have a look at the bearings and see what's going on. I'm gonna get them ordered up and I gotta slam them in this weekend so that I can get on the dyno for next Friday on April 5th. So, the DSM is crank locked. Big surprise. This uh, is the crank here. It's not awful, nothing you can feel with your finger. The rest of the journals are actually okay, but that, uh, sorry it's kind of dark. That um, bearing coming apart sent some stuff through the rod bearings. They took it just fine, so there's no damage or anything. Just got to replace them but this engine is probably going to only go this season now and we'll replace them put it on the dyno and run it for the season and hope she lasts and i got another block i'm going to build a two three out of so this is the good side of the thrust bearing and that's the bad side it's kind of hard to see in the video but uh there you go it's substantially thinner that's probably most of our 40 thou of movement right there and we found a little bit of the pieces that came off of here in the pan. This is a rod bearing, you can see all the little specks that it took. It's actually did pretty well. Didn't damage the rod or, or sorry, rod, uh, the crank, which is why they're there. So replace them and send it. All right, so crank's out. Night number two. I'd like to say day two, but I don't get to do this during the day. So the new crank looks pretty good. This crank definitely got hot. You can see right here, here. It was not getting as much oil as it should have been. I'm guessing because the clearance on the side here where it was all wore into the thrust surface was so big that the pressure on this journal wouldn't stay there. All right, got all the bearings out, cranks out. Gonna roll the, well, I don't really have to roll them in because the crank's out, but put the new bearings in, hang the new crank and probably be done for tonight. And the oil pump and stuff will be here tomorrow and start getting that stuff back in. Woo! Crank is in there. Night two, it's hanging in there, waiting for an oil pump for tomorrow and some seals and stuff, but, uh, Dodgy Dave gave me a hand. I can do a bunch of this stuff by myself now. Hanging this crank in here by myself would have been pretty much impossible. So that's pretty sweet. It's just hanging by one bear or one cap right now, but I'll uh, just throw the other two on loosely and call her a day.
Oh yeah, parts have showed up in one day. All right, day three. Um, whole bunch of parts. And last night I got the crank hung in there. I got the main cap bearings on, but I don't have rod bearing caps on there. And I'm gonna plastic gauge a couple just to make sure things are looking all right. Um, first, I'm gonna clean up a bit because I've got like a disaster everywhere in here from thrashing on the thing last night. So, uh, gonna clean up a bit and then uh, start cleaning up some of these parts to go back on and probably uh, get all the caps in there and plastic gauge it and then start putting everything back together. I'm gonna try and get the main seals on and the oil pump and put the clutch in and stuff like that. And then I got, uh, I think uh, Dodgy Dave's gonna come tomorrow again and uh, help me get the tranny on there and then hopefully Saturday morning we'll be able to fire it up. Okay, so I'm gonna check uh, bearing clearances on the center main cap with one of the thrust. Um, it should be right, the standard crank, standard bearings. The Molly lube for torquing, the two ARP nuts, center cap, some plastic gauge. Got uh, one to three thou plastic gauge, so bearing clearance should be right around two ish, I believe. We'll see what it comes out at. Okay, got the nuts all greased up. And a uh, little piece of plastic gauge that might actually be a little long, but it'll be alright. I'm gonna go throw that in there, torque it in three steps to 60 foot pounds, which is what ARP calls for on these main stud kits. Alright, so you can see this little guy. Sorry, it's a little bright. Let's go ahead and fix that. There we go. So it gives you the range from one thou to three thou. And then you can see the plastic gauge squished right there. Try and get this to focus. So we're uh, probably just less than one and a half, but more than more than one. See if I can get that. Uh, pretty hard to see on the camera, but anyways, we're probably like 0.00125 kind of range, and spec is eight ten thousandths to two thou, with a max service limit of four thou. So we're right there. I am good with it. I am not going to check the rest because I'm lazy and it's all standard stuff. It should be fine. There's nothing machined on this crank, and uh, I'm just gonna check a rod now. Okay, here's a rod. I, it's gonna be hard for me to type this. We got. Oops. Uh, one and a. 1.75 is a little less than. Thou and a half, or sorry, a little more than a thou and a half, or not quite two thou. Oh. 1.75 thou. You should charge probably aim for about two, maybe on this high horsepower, 500 horse range, it might be better to be a little loose, but that's about spec, so can't do much about it right now. And dials in a week, so let's send it. All right, so. I, uh, I've i got 1.25 thou on the mains, 1.75 thou on the rods. As far as I can see, that's about the stock spec. Um, some race guys open it up a little more than that to like two and three-ish range. But uh, with 1040 oil, this should be fine, I think. So we're gonna send it, because I don't have a way to change it anyway, and at least it's where it's supposed to be, per se. All right, so. Rotating assembly's all in. I gotta build this thing now. I already swapped the oil pump gear, put the new castle nut on, and the little stub shaft where the balance shaft usually goes. And all I got left to do is pop this seal out and put the plug in there. And I just press it in with a little bit of epoxy so it's definitely not going to come out. This, uh, Oil pump front cover K 
came from RTM Racing in under 24 hours. So that's pretty awesome. Shout out to those guys. And uh, ACL makes this one and it looks really good when you compare it to this one. Looks really nice. Um, I did pull this one apart and it really doesn't look that bad. I could probably run it again. Like a tiny bit of scoring on the side play of the housing. The side of the gears, the gears look fine though. So I'll probably polish it up. It'll be a good spare if I ever needed it. Go in my stack of DSM parts that I probably don't need to keep. All right, plugs in. I don't really know which way to put it, but it fit both ways and it looked cooler this way. And I epoxied it anyway, so it's not coming out of there. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna clean up the surface of the block and get the gasket out for this and put it on. Boom, new oil filter housing, front cover thingy and pump on. Kind of a shame that this guy's so old and shitty, but the cover that's gonna get covered up looks really nice. Okay, so it's midnight. I gotta work tomorrow. I'm gonna call her a day. Um, I did get the rear main seal on as well. Uh, I was gonna put the flywheel on, but I don't have the dowel pin for it, so I'm either gonna have to try and find one tomorrow, or if I don't find one, I will make one on my lathe. So. But I'm calling her a day. Day four tomorrow. So I couldn't find a dowel pin in town for the crank to locate the flywheel. I don't think it's absolutely mandatory, but I'm gonna make one anyways just to be safe. All right, so we got this turned down to uh, nine mil, which is what the diff factory dowel is. I just gotta uh, shorten it to 14 mil and then it'll fit in there and I don't have to wait two weeks from Mitsubishi because apparently nobody has one. Anyways, all good. I froze my little, little dowel here. We're gonna smash her in, smash her in the hole. Did you just look at it? Like a glove. My fancy broom handle clutch alignment tools working like a charm. I guess we'll find out for sure once we try to stab the tranny out. Oh, man. The transmission's in. Rogue's happy about it. Yes. All right, so pan's in, tranny's in, timing belt's on. Just for shits and giggles, we're gonna see what the crank end play is. So we got it bottomed out. And we got three and a half thou. So a little better than 10 times less than it used to have. So that's kind of nice. And we, I bottomed it out the other way to begin with, but yeah. Anyways, sweet. All right, so Al and Dave and I thrashed on this thing. It's about one in the morning. Rad's back in, we gotta put the intake on. And I don't feel like fighting with the pulleys and front cover on here right now, but it's timed, it rotates fine. The transfer case is in, turbo's in. Yeah, we did not bad. The pile of parts, these are not going back in. That's all that's left to go back in. So, did pretty good. I will uh, get it running in the next day or so here and then dyno next Friday. So it's Saturday morning and we had a little late night mess up last night. I put all of this in before I put that in. Which is not a big deal, I gotta pull the stub anyway to get it in, but it's just kind of funny. Alright, it's about 9 o'clock on Saturday morning. Thrashed on this thing till 1 in the morning, something like that. Pretty much got her together, the only thing that's not hooked up right now is the driver's side axle. But I'm too anxious to see how things work here, so we're gonna dump some oil in it. And then see if it'll fire and if everything is working right. So this is awesome. This was not a problem before I did this, and I didn't take this apart, so I don't know how it happened. But right there, it's just pissing coolant out of the friggin' thing, out of the front water pipe. I don't know how that happened, but I'm gonna try and fire it, and I'll worry about that later. All right, 
we're gonna see if this thing will fire. I turned it over just to make sure nothing was making weird noises. It sounds good. Fuel pumps are on. See what happens. Oh, come on, baby. Oh, she's trying. There it is. Woo! Oh, yeah. Oil pressure. thing is, is I got that coolant leak that I didn't know I had and didn't have before so that'll be a pain in the ass but at least this thing runs I don't know what that sound is okay nothing major a little bolt there was loose rubbing on this pulley so I'm just gonna fire it one more time make sure everything's okay from out here I got that thing running I decided to go visit my dad he's got a nice little Corvette here 82 all original it's in a pile right now because we built a house and these are all the parts but the thing runs and drives all good to go anyways uh, take a break from the car go back tomorrow probably just button it up and fix that coolant leak but uh, yeah thanks for watching uh, let me know what you think in the comments like subscribe and I'm hitting the dyno this Friday, April 5th. So uh, stay tuned. I'll have a dyno video for that. And uh, we'll see if we can hit that 500 wheel horse mark. Hopefully the bearings are good and I don't mess anything up. Thanks again. See you next time.